My name is Jackson Foster. I am 22 years old. I currently live in Colorado Springs. Vegan transcends animal rights and vegan can be a word and a, and a phrase and a movement that combines, you know, animal rights, health and nutrition, environmentalism, but it goes beyond just those things. I feel like vegan also encompasses the dialogue to end sexism and speciesism and racism. It's a lifestyle, not just a diet. It goes way beyond food. We go beyond the kale in the vegan movement if you call yourself one and label yourself as a vegan. Um, it's a way of life that you treat the harmonious ecosystem that is the world in a way that you would like to be treated yourself. Um, and with that comes treating animals with respect and dignity and not using their, using their lives as a way to benefit yours monetarily, which is pretty much how the system uh, works now. It also makes you feel good. It, it puts you on a spiritual path to open up your heart and your mind to a realm that when you're intaking fear and suffering and torture and toxins, um, your body's not prepared to bring itself into this spiritual state that I that I know for myself is like one of the reasons that gets me fired up to wake up in the morning and like continue progressing as a human being. Um, so why vegan? Because it's the greatest thing that you can do for Mother Earth and the planet to keep it healthy and functioning, even though it's in a crisis right now, because vegan is not something that the mainstream identifies with, the mainstream human population. Vegan because it's the healthiest thing that you can do for yourself, for your physical body, your skin, your athletic performance, your digestion, and it also reduces the largest um, you know, form of suffering on this planet, which is the billions of non-human animals that are tortured and abused every single year. And it also helps humans be able to feed other humans. We can end world hunger with vegan. Um, so those are some of the reasons why I continue to live the lifestyle and also promote it to everybody. Throughout the past year, my main source of protein was probably from bananas, and I'm not kidding when I say that. When it comes to the calories, like the, the, the amount of protein I get from my calories, I get most of my protein from whole foods, predominantly fruits, because that's where most of my calories come from. Um, that's what I do personally, and I've been able to build muscle mass, uh, you know, eating anywhere from 10 to 20% of my total calories from protein, which even if you're eating a raw whole food plant-based diet, you're very likely going to get into that range. But if you're interested in building muscle mass quicker, or for some reason you think that you need an excess of protein from 10 to 15%, you can eat foods like whole grains, um, like you know, rice or barley or buckwheat or things like quinoa, black beans, chickpeas, adzuki beans. Um, there's so many different kinds of legumes, whole foods again. And then you, you can even take it to the extreme, I would say, and eat tempeh and tofu and like low process, sort of higher protein foods. And we really shouldn't be talking exactly about just labeling things as protein when it comes to building muscle. We need the essential nine amino acids that our body doesn't synthesize on its own from in taking calories and the science has shown and proven that you can get all of those amino acids needed to build big muscle mass from a diverse whole food plant-based diet um, so I don't like pick certain foods to get protein from I simply worry about getting enough calories in my diet to fuel my exercise and metabolism and protein falls into place so that I can build muscle mass Uh, well, when I went vegan, I was about 140 pounds. I'm six foot two. I was extremely underweight. I didn't have any muscle mass at all. I was pretty much just, you know, bones and some skin. And uh, now, after three years of adopting a plant-based diet, experimenting with tons of different um, fitness, uh, you know, fitness events. Like I first got into endurance, where I got. Again, very, very lean, stayed at that 140 pound weight. And then I realized I wanted to build some muscle mass as a vegan to show other people that 
again, you can get these nine essential amino acids from plants just as easily as you can get them from animal products. It's just when you take them from the plants, it doesn't come with that full package of high fat and animal-based protein and cholesterol, which we know are the building blocks to chronic disease. Um, so in this transformation, in about a year and a half on a 100% uh, vegan diet and half of that time being on a 100% raw food diet, um, I'm currently about 25 pounds heavier than when I started. I'm almost 170 pounds with a similar body fat percentage and that translates to muscle mass. I'm very regimented in the gym and I'm into bodybuilding movements, like weightlifting bodybuilding movements and you know, it's incredible like when I work out with people who are of a similar fitness level as me but don't have as clean of a diet, they can't push it as hard in the gym. And also if they do, they won't recover close to as fast. So I've seen like, you know, I, I work out with a lot of guys at my school in my gym and I'm able to push it so much harder while recovering and building muscle mass versus my peers who aren't on this clean diet. And the only thing that's different, you know, it's not my genetics, I don't have genetics for muscle building, um, and it's just eating cleanly and lifting lifting with a, you know, schedule and being disciplined about it. And you know, my fitness has blossomed in that time and it's only getting better. So if you're interested in starting bodybuilding and putting on muscle mass as a vegan, the most important thing you need to think about is actually not protein at all. In fact, I don't focus on that. Um, but the most important thing I would say is meal timing and total calories consumed. People, a lot of people don't realize that animal products are way more calorically dense than plant-based foods. So if you are not on a vegan diet and you're used to things like, um, you know, e eating the bodybuilder meals, which are usually eggs, chicken, rice, things that are very calorically dense, um, you need to be in a calorie surplus when you're building muscle, meaning you need to intake more calories per day than you consume. I recommend, depending on your metabolism and body type, anywhere from 500 to 15 1500 extra calories than you burn. Um, so the first thing is like be disciplined about how many calories you're eating. Make a food diary. Go to chronometer.com. Like actually, you know, do the actual research. I see so many people who say, oh, I eat so much. I eat till I'm full, but it's not working. Do you actually know how many calories you're eating? Because oftentimes you can be really full on these foods, but if they're not calorically dense, you're actually not intaking that surplus of calories you need for muscle mass. So that's a huge thing. Um, the next thing is meal timing. Like focus on eating right after your workout. That's the most crucial time when your body, when your body doesn't have too much carbohydrates and glycogen after a lifting session. Immediately, I keep like 10 dates, dates in the locker of the gym, and right after I drop my last weight, I'll fuel my body so that I can start replenishing and recovering. Um, other tips are also you don't need to only get fitness advice from vegan YouTubers. In fact, I've gotten tons of help off of YouTube, um, people who I would never take nutritional advice, but you can admire people's physique regardless of their diet and get fitness, you know, workout information, what lifts to do, how many reps to do, and that sort of allows you to branch out of maybe the vegan YouTube or online bubble, but I would say take your nutrition fitness advice from someone who's a vegan that you admire their physique. If every human in the world went vegan, which I ultimately think um, won't happen 100% in my lifetime, but I think we will become the majority in my lifetime, I truly do, um, the changes we would see you know, starting with human beings is that we wouldn't have things like world hunger anymore. One in seven people on the planet are starving of calories, but human beings grow enough food to feed 14 billion people. And that's because we're feeding most of our calories to animals, losing billions of them in the process, and then rich countries can eat those animals. So we would get rid of these huge social justice human issues if everyone went vegan. Um, next, we wouldn't really be talking about climate change as much as we do now. Right now, 
the human population is in fear of climate change. It's this idea, this concept that is hitting some poor countries, coastal countries in Southeast Asia, but like here in the United States and more affluent countries, it's just this looming phenomenon that we know is ultimately going to transform the near future of our life in a negative way. Um, but if we all went vegan, you know, the government, the U.S. government, the IPCC, Inter, uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, says that. 18% of global greenhouse gas emissions are attributed to animal agriculture. Number two in that line is transportation, meaning cars, trains, planes, elevators, all forms of transportation only make up 13% of global greenhouse gas emissions. So even the U.S. government is saying that animal agriculture is the most unsustainable practice and greenhouse gas emitting industry in the entire world. Some other environmental organizations, even conservative ones, like the World Watch um, did a study, I think in 2009, that attributed 51% of greenhouse gases coming from animal agriculture. So we would no longer have this fear of this sort of doomsday apocalyptic climate crisis if we started to eat a plant-based diet, and that's huge. Next, um, the biggest killers in the world would sort of dwindle down from heart disease being number one, um, killing I think over 600,000 US uh, citizens per year. That's a 100% proven chronic disease completely due to diet and lifestyle. It has very little to nothing to do with genetics, um, from heart disease to cancer, MS, osteoporosis, arthritis, um, so many of these diseases that are draining people's bank accounts and breaking up families, that would go away as well if we started to eat cleanly. Um, the next thing, what else? Uh, it's, probably, it's probably enough. You can find me on plantriotic.com. It's like patriotic, but plant in front of it. Um, I'm also on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Tumblr, um, all at Plantriotic. And I also have an iTunes podcast called the Plantriotic Podcast, where every single Monday of the week, I put up a new episode, a one to two hour long form interview uh, with someone on the topics of plant-based nutrition, animal rights, yoga, sustainability, spirituality, fitness, food, and all the things that I know make my life more rich with love, success, and purpose.